Welcome to worship Fort Massey United Church on November 27th, 2022. It is the first Sunday in Advent. My name is Sharon Valentine and I am the Intentional Interim Minister serving Fort Massey United Church here in Halifax. A warm welcome to all joining us in person and online. We are glad that you are with us where everyone is welcomed, needed, and belongs. Let's be open to God's message of hope to each of us today. I'm going to invite John to play some quiet music while Lily and her helper come forward to light our community candle. If you have a candle at home, I invite you to light it now as we all hold the light of Christ in our hearts. We begin this holy season of Advent in hope and anticipation. We are open in anticipating what God will do in our lives and in our world. Come as we feast and celebrate in hope, lighting this candle, reminding us we are all part of this community, generation to generation, where there is room for every story. Christ's light shines. The community is together.
Since time immemorial, First Peoples nations have tended and cared for these lands, learning from, with, and through creation's teachings and gifts. We acknowledge the land and the First Peoples of the Mi'kmaq traditions where we are here in Halifax. And we acknowledge the lands and First Peoples of treaties and unceded territories of wherever our virtual worshipers are. We all engage in paths to right relationships to truth and reconciliation, to live in peace and in friendship with all people. May it be so. Well, you may have noticed the additional set of candles in a wreath. Over the four weeks of Advent, we will be lighting the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, and on Christmas Eve, the Christ candle. Giving thanks for the Christmas gift of hope today, I invite Santia and Lily Noor to come forward and light our first blue candle, the candle of hope. What gives you hope? Today, we light the candle of hope to remind ourselves that God is at work in this world. From generation to generation, God has brought good news of love and compassion, justice and community. Let us rest and abide in that good news. Hope is a candle. comfortable where you are seated to connect with the divine in a way that makes sense to you this morning let us breathe in hope together and as we release our breath to let go of stress and anxiety let's just breathe it in together and let it out in silence God of yesterday, today and tomorrow. You say bring your full self, there's room for you here. But we say our lives are too messy, O oh God. You say bring your hopes and your dreams, there is room for you here. But we say it's too risky. It's too risky to hope, God. You say, bring your grief and your prayers. There is room for you here. But we say, some things are easier to forget, God. God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we know in our hearts that there is room for us here. Room for every story. We thank you that you open our hearts and create the space, the knowing and the hope to claim. There is room. We are filled with hope, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
let us raise our voices together in song as we sing together, Come, Thou Long Expected Jesus. Voices United, number two.
Please pick up your carol sing request sheets in the Queen and Tobin Street lobbies. Tamara has placed a clipboard outside the minister's study to collect your Christmas carol uh, suggestion sheets. A reminder that we will have a hang of the green Saturday, December 10th at 9. That must be a.m. 9 a.m. here in the sanctuary as we decorate for Christmas. Sunday school and white gift is Sunday, December 18th. There are many different outreaches identified. Please help out as you can. Our congratulations to Betty Casey on receiving the Queen Elizabeth Platinum Jubilee Medal on Tuesday. And our congratulations also to proud grandparents James and Carrie Robertson who welcomed their sixth grandchild, Sadie Rose Flynn, on November 21st. She is the daughter of Melissa and Daniel Flynn and is a new sibling for Addison and Emmett. Blessings and our best wishes to all who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or other celebrations this week. I invite you to stand according to your comfort as we say together a new creed, our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We believe in God. stewardship second as you consider your givings this year how can you give in order to bring hope hope through gifts of time hope through gifts of talent hope through gifts of prayer and awareness hope through gifts of resources we cannot take up our offering as we did before COVID. You will find an offering plate at the entrance in which you can leave a donation after worship, pre-authorized remittance, e-transfer, and envelopes are also all possible. In a gesture of giving and receiving according to your comfort, you're invited to pretend or to imagine you are holding an offering plate. In our giving and in our receiving, our offering will be received.
us pray. Holy One, Emmanuel, you are with us. You have come and you are coming again. As you have given yourself to us through the coming of the Christ child, we also give ourselves to you. In hope we offer all that we have and all that we are. May all be given to your glory to spread the message of your great love here and throughout our world. We ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, our theme in Advent has to do with generation to generation. And today I want to share something old and something new. And if you look up on the communion table this morning, you will see a very old book. It's not old only in the way that the Bible is old and we've known the Bible for years and years. This particular Bible is the Robertson family Bible. It has been handed down through the generations of the Robertson family, and it has now been given to Fort Massey. When we looked inside the Bible, we discovered that that book was made in 1873. You might remember that the church was built here. Fort Massey was built in 1871. So just like we celebrated 151 years this year, that Bible will be 150 years old in 2023. Can you imagine? There were no lights. They would have used candles maybe lanterns, or only when there was daylight from outside. We also have something new. Jade Fraser and her family donated to us a set of battery-operated candles that we use each week. The wax doesn't get messy, and the candles don't burn down. We don't need matches or a way to light the candles. Just change the batteries. It's way easier. Now, you might know that I'm kind of afraid of regular burning candles. And I'm not very good at lighting a candle either. It probably wouldn't be a very safe idea. And I really can't tell if a candle is lit or not. I can't even tell if the lights are on or off, but you know, that's okay. It's kind of weird, isn't it? But I want us to think about the light today, the light in the dedication of these special items on this Sunday of hope in the season of Advent. I can't see the light of the sunshine, S-U-N-S-H-I-N-E, outside or the lamp, the light bulb, or the candle. But we all share, we all hold the light of Christ. I like to think about the light of Christ as Jesus as the sun, S-O-N, sunshine. Jesus, the son of God, the light that we've always had and always will have. The light that grows through our stories of the Bible. I just like those of us who are here today to think about 1871, the beginnings of this church. There are many here who are part of the heritage because through the years, your ancestors, your descendants, also worshipped in this church. 
I'm just inviting people to just clap your hands if you're part of the Robertson clan or the originated families way back in 1871. Let's see if we have anybody here today. All right. That is pretty amazing. I'm going to invite us all to just settle into a moment of prayer and reflection, thinking of our vast heritage and the light of God as we dedicate the Bible and the candles this morning. These special things to Fort Massey. Let us pray. Dear God, today we dedicate this Robertson Family Bible and this special set of candles to Fort Massey United Church. We thank you for all the ways that they will continue to shine the light of Jesus in our lives. And we pray for the generations that will continue to come to be blessed by these gifts. We ask all this in Jesus' name, the light of the world. Amen. And I do invite you after worship today, please do come on up and look at the Bible. I think you'll find it really interesting. Not only is it big and heavy, but it's got some really interesting hinges in the way it's fitted together. And if you could just take a moment and place your hand on that Bible, thinking of the people who over 149 years have looked to the pages of that specific Bible for its wisdom and its gifts. We are blessed by many gifts. And let us share in the gift of prayer that Jesus taught us as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Children who wish are invited to proceed directly to Sunday school with Santia. And during the singing of the communion hymn. Or children can remain in the sanctuary and take part in the receiving of communion according to your family's wishes. And join Sunday school with Santia following our communion. Continuing with our pandemic protocols for in-person worship, you should have gotten an individual Ziploc with a piece of gluten-free bread and a grape. And for those worshiping with us online, please use whatever food and drink you have to join us in the sacrament of Holy Communion. We will take the elements all together at the same time a little bit later in the service. The United Church celebrates an open table. All are invited to share in the receiving of the sacrament of Holy Communion. And as we prepare to share in this sacred meal, we will sing the first verse of Voices United 457 as we gather at your table. <coughs>
in God's house, everyone is welcome. Those who seem like they have it all together and those who feel like their world is falling apart. No matter who we are, there is room for all of us here. From generation to generation, we share the Christmas story of how a baby in a manger who was born in Bethlehem, about the hope, the hope in every generation. We believe in a God who promised to Abraham, who wrestled with Jacob, who walked with Ruth, who spoke with Moses, who grieved with Bathsheba, who danced with David, who dreamed with Joseph, and who hoped like Mary. We believe in a God who has been inviting, transforming, challenging us from generation to generation. And we believe the same God is here with us now, saying, come on in, there's room for you here. From generation to generation, this is the good news of the gospel. At this time, we remember Jesus, who on the night before he died, took a loaf of bread, gave it thanks, broke it, and said, take, eat, whenever you do this, remember me. Likewise, after supper, he said, take the cup, remember, this is the new covenant, remember me. And as he poured, we remember that Christ poured out his life for each of us, the cup of blessing given for each of us as we come to this meal. Let us pray. Gracious God, breath of peace, source of love, bringer of hope, we thank you that your spirit is within us. Make us, while many, one. Make us, though broken, whole. Make us, despite death, alive and enlivened. And so, God of hope, make this food the means of our rebuilding, this fruit the medium of our transformation. This table, the foundation of our renewal, for it is the table of your son Jesus. And this community, the place of our rebirth and our rebirthing. Come, come Holy Spirit, Fill these simple elements of food and drink. Remind us of Jesus' love. With these elements, may you nourish and sustain us, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer. Praise be to you, now, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. We gather, companions on faith journey, all is ready. Take, eat, Christ's body given for us. Take, drink. The cup of the new covenant in Christ's blood shed for all people. The cup of blessing given for you. The bread of life, the fruit of blessing. 
Let us pray together, saying together, God of hope, thank you for all we have received, for nourishing and nurturing us, body, mind, and spirit. Generation to generation, you are with us. We thank you, God, for filling us with hope and creating room for every story. Amen. And let us sing again as we finish our hymn 457, as we gather at your table. scripture text today. Jim is reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5, reading from the New International Version. The mountain of the Lord. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come. O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Offered as wisdom for the journey. May we walk in his light. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, we are invited to focus on verses 1 to 17. Matthew's genealogy includes 42 names organized in three sets of 14. The number 14, twice of seven, could represent wholeness or completeness, though it's important to note that many names, some of the evil kings and some of the patriarchs, some of the matriarchs are all omitted from the list. 
So I'm not going to read those 16 verses, but I lift up before us verse 17, asking us to just take a moment and pause to think about generations, generations in your life, the generations we read about in Holy Scripture, as I read to us verse 17. There were 14 generations from Abraham to David, another 14 from David to the Babylonian exile, and yet another 14 from the Babylonian exile to Christ offered as wisdom for the journey. Amen. Amen. Walk in its light. And I invite our choir now to share their ministry of music. Thank you, choir. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God. Open our hearts to what needs to bloom within us, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Isaiah's prophecy paints a powerful illustration of regeneration, of weapons of war being transformed into gardening tools, plows that break up soil, shears that prune away dead branches. What needs to be unearthed or dug up in your life? What needs to be pruned away? Do you have any deadness that you just need to let go of to create the space for the sacredness of life-giving gifts? 
open hearts, open minds, open spirits. Native teachings indicate that seven generations before us, our ancestors' decisions and actions are affecting us in this present time. And what we do now is said to affect seven generations going forward from us now. That's a lot of greats if you think about it. Great, 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 and so on. Now, if we say for simplicity's sake that a new generation is born every 25 years, what happened in the world 175 years ago affects us now. This church built in 1871 Doing that math at 25 years times 7 would set us in 1847. A baby born in 1847 would have turned 24 in 1871 when this church first opened. Think of the young families probably with growing families by the time they were 24. If we think of the Bible we just dedicated, now I would be making up the story, but to just imagine if that family Bible were given to that family, that person born in 1873, they would have been 26 years old. And those generations are you in the pews who are part of that family lineage. If these 151-year-old walls could talk, imagine their stories. Now let's think in the present moment. Now, I'm thinking about Sadie Rose Flynn, a Robertson family descendant, James and Kari's granddaughter, born on Monday. Using this same set of ideas, the philosophy of 25 years, one generation, going forward seven generations, the year will be 21 97. Three years shy of the year 2200. This building that has stood the test of time, will it be here? What will our descendants will be doing? It's hard to say. This philosophy invites us to cultivate sacred imagining. Imagination from past to present and present to future. You may have heard about this understanding in Native traditions as we've read about the generational impacts of residential schools. Seven generations before and after. Seven generations ago, our planet wasn't being destroyed. Creation and humanity were much more living in harmony. The waters were clean and clear. Did you notice that I read about sets of 14 generations in the Gospel of Matthew? 14 there as well. Think about the generations of past. If we went back 14 generations, the year would have been 1672, 350 years ago. What was life like? Where was hope abiding and moving forward 
the year will be 2372. I use Google to do all my calculations. Matthew lists the names of all of Jesus' forebears as a marker of hope, finally realized. Names are threads that connect our histories, our stories, our futures. We are the hope, the living hope of those who have come before us. And we pour hope into those living in hope for those who will come after us. It's up to us. All is lived out, passed on from generation to generation. The root word of generation is gen, meaning origin or birth. What today? Are you being called to generate, to birth, to bring forth? What have your own ancestors and those who have come before you passed on for you to continue? Spiritual elders, the ones who planted seeds for things now blooming and yet to bloom? What seeds are you planting for the future? From generation to generation, the term alone reminds us of the ways our lives, our histories, our actions, and stories are all interconnected, woven together. The Word of God, the light within us, is always unfolding in and through us. My paternal grandmother was a genealogist before her time. She captured precious stories and told them in ways that etched them in my fiber, connecting me with what had gone on generations before me. Now, she would have loved the internet, but what the internet's information could not have captured was the love in her stories, the respect, the reverence enlivened when she told her stories. What she said, when she said it, how she said it, and all that was bigger than us. Why all these stories matter. As you connect later with the Bible on the communion table, Sense the generations, sense the life in this community of faith, for it continues to be life-giving. My grandmother's passion was so great, and we here have passion for so many things. What stories do you need to capture and share? Don't delay sharing those stories. Life is too short. Stories, time, relationships are precious. A young family attends a rural church in a community near Peterborough, Ontario, near where we had our trailer when I was young, and where a dear friend of mine is now clergy. Each year at Advent and Christmas, this young family goes above and beyond to share the message of Advent and Christmas with their wider community, in their community of faith and beyond. They did some very inventive building of a manger scene on the church property and sorted out how people could come to be safe and take part in the nativity story during COVID when we could not gather in 2020. And then again, the same family managed to creatively pivot things when the lockdown happened so quickly mid-December last year in 2021. You can imagine their excitement 
thinking about being able to finally gather safely this year to celebrate in this 2022 season. This family is noted for their, thea their theatrical, for their artistic gifts, and their generosity. Extended family also attends this church. The children nurtured by their grandparents in faith and in family. They were so excited for the holiday season. Their eldest in grade 12, very active in theatrical presentations, getting ready for the holiday gifts this year. Youngest in grade nine, and mom, the teaching assistant in the same school. Ready for special offerings in church, school, and community. This week, in a tragic accident that occurred at the supper hour Tuesday, Dad Jonathan, Mom Stephanie, and Son Riddick were all killed in a collision that also killed the driver of the other vehicle, Jason. And it saw 14-year-old Rogan airlifted to the hospital for sick kids in Toronto where she continues to cling to life, having undergone life-altering surgeries. Two weekends ago, she was at a dance competition, surrounded by her family. Life begins and life ends in a heartbeat. I honor this family today because their story matters. The way they embraced life used their gifts, skills, and lived for Jesus. I ask for you today for prayers for Rogan, her family, her church, her school. We build bridges. We need to seek ways where whatever is on our heart that's hurting or horrible or tragic or just a wound we can't even explain, to create space for freedom, for forgiveness, for telling our story. We build those bridges, not the barriers. Nurture the seeds of kindness and compassion and forgiveness. Speak truth and advocate for what you believe in. Why believe? Why bother? Why pray when tragic can happen as it does? Is it important? Yes. Others sense our hope and our passion and our joy Every story matters. Do you ever notice how in times of crisis, even in media, in secular situations, people speak of prayer? I heard the principal of that high school telling all who were watching that they were praying, inviting prayer. Generation to generation, the tapestry keeps weaving those threads of faith. Faith is within us all. Even if you look around and feel despair that the pews are not as full as they once were, the faith of seven generations before and going forward is alive and enlivened. We feel it. We know it. We feel it in the spirit of this season. Spirit is at work. Because without fail, faith continues to change us. It reframes the way we hope, centers the way we love, and it shapes the way we live. Share the good news. God bless you.
Let us pray. God of hope and healing, we lift up before you Rogan's family, her community, her school, her church, the family that is struggling. And we lift up to you, O oh God, all who are dealing with hurt and loss, with grieving. You are the bringer of hope, the source of love that knows no boundaries. Your song of wisdom rang out before the world began. Throughout the ages, your song of liberation has impregnated us. Filled us with your hope for a world that is better, that is growing, that is faith renewing, for a world where those considered last and least are first and most. Violence is overcome by the power of your ancient love. Generation to generation, O oh God, we hear stories and we know there is room. You bring your longings to birth. Send prophets to awaken us to your coming among us. You inspire us, O oh God, with the songs of the angels to renew our hope. We thank you for those who, like Mary, have the strength and courage to give birth to your love in the world. For those who, like the shepherds, dare to seek out the child of Bethlehem. For those who, like the wise ones, actively challenge violence and oppressive powers. We join in the Advent prayer of all your people as all hearts cry out, Come, O oh come God, you are with us, Emmanuel. And as we wait, we listen and we watch for your coming among us. We proclaim, O oh God, your goodness. We remember all whom you would have us share your feast with. We pray for all who are in sorrow or in pain, all who are ill or alone, all in prison, all in need of forgiveness and hope, all who are close to our hearts. All our siblings, those living with fear, oppression, or hunger. All whose lives have been affected by racism, poverty, and other forms that are not part of your love. For all whom the world counts as last and least, we pray for this church and its many ministries for nations as they strive for peace and justice, for an end to all that will be wrong in your eyes. Transform it to peace and joy and love and hope as in the war tools turned to gardening tools, we live to you our joys and our concerns. In Jesus' name we offer all of these things. Amen. And our next hymn today is from Voices United 882, Prepare the Way of Zion.
leave this place, may you go knowing that from generation to generation, we have been claimed and loved. From generation to generation, God has been by our side. From generation to generation, we are not alone. The God of yesterday, today and tomorrow knows you by name, loves you and calls you forth, saying, go, be the person you are called to be with bold discipleship, deep spirituality, and daring justice. What we generate is life-giving. Invite others to join us to share in this special season. Do all for the best and highest good. May God bless you, and amen.